Hello and welcome to KubeCon 24 in Paris. I'm Aaron Quill and I am here with Peter with Anchor. Peter, welcome. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So Peter, what do you do? Oh, I work in developer relations for Ampere. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And what does Ampere do? We make semiconductors. We basically are the cloud native conductor company that is trying to be the sustainable offering for people who want to compute in the cloud. Now, when you say semiconductors, that can mean a whole bunch of things. Specifically, what type of things do you build? We build essentially a general purpose CPU that has an extremely high core count and uses roughly half the electricity of an Intel Xeon. And yeah, he, he basically tried to create the highest density of compute platform that you can fit your data center. Now, when, when you say that my mind immediately goes to, gee, that, that sounds like ARM. Is this ARM based then? Absolutely. Yeah. This is an ARC 64 based processor. We have right now, a, a family called the ultra family, which has two different processors in it for simplicity. We'll talk about it at the high end of the core count. Yeah. You got an 80 core and that's in the ultra line. Uh, that you can think of as has a uh, high data path into the core L2, L3 cast, like you'd find in a Xeon, yep. right? In the ultra max, we uh, remove uh, the L3 cache, uh, shrink the L2 cache to essentially create more space to add more cores, right? So that way you go up to 128 cores uh, uh, with that process. So essentially, if you think about it, you can get two of those in a chassis, or in some cases we've had, I think it was one of our OEM vendors who builds a, a platform. They had a 1024 cores in a, in a 2U via two sockets via four sleds. So essentially it's really about increasing the amount of compute power you can get into a rack, reclaiming that real estate, right? Because as we all know today, the amount of a lot of data centers were built with a particular amount of electricity and they're never going to change from that, right? Ampere processes allow us to be able to we utilize that electricity in that data center a lot better by having much more compute and that generates uh, less heat. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's all about less is the new, uh, yeah, I was gonna say less is the new more or more is the new less. I, yeah. I'm not sure which way you want to go with that, but, but essentially we're, you know, trying to take the data center back and who wants a room with one rack and one server in it that you're paying exponential amounts of uh, money for real estate, right? So let's use that real estate appropriately. Let's use that power the most efficiently uh, we can, and let's try to create a environment that allows you to continue to grow while you're doing your technical business. Yeah. So, so that's awesome. And that's what I love is to really see ARM grow up on the small, more embedded side to see it move into the data center for those exact things you start to hit on. Now, let's talk about some use cases. Why, why are customers looking for that type of profile? The first thing is obviously savings, right? Most people don't realize how important the choice of instance type or compute processor type architecture yeah. you use is. Quite simply, you can save roughly two thirds of your run cost by switching from an Intel instance or an AMD instance to an, an Ampere based instance, just because of the fact that savings that the cloud provider is realizing, they pass that and pass that directly through to you. So you're not necessarily paying the same type of premium, uh, that you would for some of the other processors, right? People always ask me what workload should run first. It's as many as you can, yep. right? Anything that you can run on ARM, you want to your processor, you should run on it because you'll instantly get that savings and cost reduction of your, you know, your run rate. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I love, especially coming from the Linux side, the fact that SUSE Linux on ARM is exactly identical to SUSE Linux on x86 and on the 390 and all the way through all the skills that I've got already have everything. In fact, I've got a bunch of ARM servers at home and they're mixed in with the x86s and I see zero difference at all, aside from the amount of heat that they generate. That's the, that's one of the, I, myself, as a former SUSE employee from a long time ago, oh, you're right. We were doing ARM stuff in the very early days. And uh, yeah, from a experience perspective, I guess, uh, in the data center, the one thing that for me, especially where interface a lot in communities and people's experience with ARM based computing is typically coming from the Tinker Pores, the Raspberry yep. Pis, and from that perspective. So when they hear ARM, they in, are an ARM based processor, they may immediately think and say, oh, Raspberry Pi. The reality of it is, no, this isn't that. This is high performance compute, scale based compute. It's, and, and the thing is, is when you give them a server that has the IPMI interface and for all intents and purposes operates and functions the same way every other server you ever used in your career would from a 
how we plug it in, how we manage it, how we will interact, uh, interact with it. Uh, it, it, it changes the, it, from my perspective, it starts to change the way you really see the technology, right? And I, I have a great example, a uh, couple of great examples I'd like to share with you. So I work a lot with Oregon State University Open Source Labs, right? They host some Ampere processors available to the community. And I remember when we first gave them, when I first gave them to them about five years ago, and they put them in, they had to, you know, they had a rack of Ampere servers. They also house open power systems. So they have a lot of, let's say, interesting PDU metrics to look at. Yeah. And when they saw the 12 Ampere systems plugged in and they were using less electricity than the top of rack switches, they needed to go and get somebody to pinch them because they weren't sure that they thought something was wrong. From that perspective, that's really like the differential, like it's a... It's almost like physics, right? Like you can see it immediately in some cases. That's a huge game changer. And the second thing I'd like to share with you is I spent a lot of time working on OpenStack. Had, a, had one of the largest infrastructures in the OpenStack community that we were using for CI. It was 700 plus servers, 40 plus racks a year. When during part of my time here at Ampere, I was lucky enough to get to play with OpenStack on some of our systems. And I think I'm fairly certain that, that the OpenStack deployment I built to play with had more cores in a single rack than I had in all the racks of year back in those days. So from a, but really for myself, it, it's a, like a, a slap to the face of, oh, wow, this is a game change. And even that we're about to come out with a, a chip that has 192 cores. And I got to play with one of those that had, a, I believe it had dual sockets. So you're talking over 300 cores. And when I see that, I still find it unbelievable because of, I am of a particular age, let's be real, but you, it, you, I just never thought I would ever see it to get to that density. And then now when you think of it, okay, that's a one new server and I can put, fill a rack with them. It, it changed for me, it changes the, the entire uh, universe of what it means to be a data center, right? You can have the entire compute power in a data center from the eighties and a one or nineties to the two thousands and a one new chassis. And so that's the amazing, like real feed on the street. That's it's undeniable, uh, when you get to witness that for yourself, I find it extremely exciting. I haven't spent a lot of my time in a data center throughout my career to, to see it evolve from my perspective that fast, Yeah, because I've been at Ampere for five years. Our first chip when I came here had 32 pools. And now to think that we're at that level of density and the, the speeds at which all the periphery that that's in that chassis are, are operating at. It's, it's pretty, as, as a true geek, it's really amazing. Yeah. And it's funny you mentioned HPC because that was really my first time that I really saw ARM based processors in the data center. Right. Mm -hmm. And first time I heard of ARM or ARM in the data center, and I was like, ARM in the data center. And then when I had the conversation with them about how much it costs to keep that running all the time, power, heating cooling and everything. They were like the entire package and everything. ARM was the only way to go. It just made so much sense for them because it's a cluster that's running and doing heavy compute 24 hours a day. Yeah, no, we don't necessarily play in the HPC space, but yeah, any, anything that uses compute. And I know there are some very, some of the uh, most powerful secret computers, I believe are also on base. Yeah. If, if you want to have efficiency in your processor, you have to go with an ARM based processor today. It was. You know, let's be real. It was architected for that. Yeah. It was built for efficiency. We're taking the, something that was essentially built to run off a battery and, but applying that technology to the use case of hyperscale compute and data center computing. So awesome. Okay. And I, I can't let you go without asking you about AI. What are you guys doing with AI? That's obviously the hot topic today. No, that's a great question. And I have to be honest, Ampere has a awesome story around AI. It's about. A little over two and eight, two years ago, we acquired a, a company that focused uh, specifically on accelerating inference. We do software acceleration of inference. So what this does is allows us to come in and, uh, and essentially run your inferencing workload without any GPUs. And essentially you're talking from a, just a cloud instance perspective, it's two thirds less of a run price yeah. to use an ARM based processor. Let's be real. You are going to have to train on GPUs, but at the end of the day, once you've done the training, you have to run it in production. You may not need a, a GPU to run it in production. And in, in most cases, you probably won't. And, I, and at that point, that's where you'll see the true price performance benefit of utilizing an ARM based or Ampere based processor in that workload. And then specifically, uh, as I mentioned, we do also add that a nice layer of acceleration underneath the common libraries like uh, PyCore, Extension Flow, and those things 
uh, to, to help even take advantage of, uh, you know, the, to optimize that even more. Okay, great. We've talked all about how cool your processors are, but what does that have to do with Rancher? What do you guys do with Rancher? I, I have to be honest. I've been a big fan of the Rancher stack for a long time. with so former Sauce Susan employee as well. And uh, yeah, when, as of recently, we've donated some servers to the Harvester team. We've uh, donated some servers to the RGS team. I'd love to see, I want to see the entire Rancher stack running on Ampere. I think there's a, a great use case for it. I think uh, given the nature of some of the things that have occurred in the industry in the last year, and really last year was the year of Linux. I think this year might be the year of hypervisors, but that's just my take. And so from that perspective, Harvester is a great platform. To me, it's that like an, that evolutionary transient being, it gives you both the hypervisor type platform plus the container based engine as well. So you get both pieces in one stack. And I think it's a great option for, uh, you know, doing computing and virtualization on, on today. But one of the things that I love to do is enable different, uh, software ecosystems, companies and all that stuff. And, it, and I've been wanting to literally been trying to work with Rancher since I got here in, uh, in 2019 prior to the, the SUS acquisition. And it's really great to get to work with you guys now, both at, at that level, at the harvester level and at the, the RGS level. And also, as I've mentioned, I've done a lot of work or starting to do some work too with Mark Abrams, who also is a great guy that I've known for, for a bunch of years. And we've been just trying to figure out, okay, how can we make something, something happen together? And I think it's all finally coming together, especially since now, you know, uh, ranchers, uh, decided to start to add formal support and add it to the pipeline. So we've yeah. got pieces of technology that are in preview, which is so exciting. We've got pieces, pieces of technology that are coming out and, and actually being supported. So I'm really excited because I think it's a, there's a great, uh, set of technologies that will really show the, the benefit of running on Ampere. Um, so yeah, that, that's, what's going on with the Rancher team. And I'm, I'm looking forward to, to hopefully talk about more as we, uh, proceed through making things work. Awesome. Peter, thank you so much for sitting down and telling us all about Emperor's new processors. Those are just killer. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.